This is the Law of Cosines tutorial. The Law of Cosines can be used to help you solve for a missing angle or side of any triangle. So for the purpose of this tutorial, our angles are going to be denoted in capital letters and our side lengths are going to be denoted in lowercase letters. Our side lengths are always directly opposite their angle. Now here are the three basic forms of the Law of Cosines. My recommendation to you is that you choose one of these and you memorize it. And then, in the future, you'll be able to manipulate it to look like either of the other two. That'll be helpful for when you're solving for different pieces of information. So, for example, I would take this top law of cosines, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Notice that you've got the side length a here and the cosine of that angle a here. That's going to be the same for each of the formulas. If you're starting with this side length, you're going to be solving for its angle underneath the cosine here. And the same with angle C. If you solve for side length C, you'll be using angle C to do that. Now, if you knew the three side lengths of a triangle, you could use those to solve for any missing angle. Or if you knew one angle and two side lengths, you could solve for the missing side length. So let's take a look at an example problem right now. What I'd like you to do is find the measure of angle A in the triangle below. Now you'll notice here that we have the three side lengths of this triangle. So I can use that first formula here to solve for angle A. So this will be side length A because it's directly opposite angle A. This will be side length B and this will be side length C. So side length A squared, so 17 squared, is equal to side length b squared, so we have 21 squared, plus side length c squared, which is going to be 13 squared, minus 2 times side length b, which is 21, times side length c, which is 13, times the cosine of angle a, which we're solving for. So, 17 squared is 289 is equal to 21 squared, which is 441, plus 13 squared, which is 169, minus 2 times 21 times 13, and 2 times 21 times 13 is 546 times the cosine of angle A. So I'll we'll add our 441 and 169 together. So we have 289 is equal to 610 minus 546 times the cosine of angle A. So now I want to subtract 610 from both sides of the equation. When I do that, we have negative 321 on the left side. On the right side, the 610's canceled, and we have negative 546 times the cosine of angle A. So I want to divide both sides now by a negative 546 because I want to get angle A alone. When I do that, we have 0 0.59 on the left side of the equation. On the right, the negative 546 is canceled and we're left with the cosine of angle A. Now we want to solve for angle A, not the cosine of angle A. So, I'm going to take the inverse cosine of both sides of the problem here. And when I do that, we find that angle A has an approximate measurement of 54 degrees. So that's how we use the law of cosines to solve for a missing angle when the three sides are given. Now let's take a look at a problem where you're given one angle and two side lengths. In this problem, I'd like you to use both the law of cosines and the law of sines to find the missing information of the triangle below. You'll notice that we know angle A and side length A, and we also know side length C. So we can use the law of sines to calculate angle C. So we can take the sine of angle A over side length A, which is 36, and set that equal to the sine of angle C over side length C, which is 41. Then we just cross multiply, so we have 36 times the sine 
of angle C is equal to 41 times the sine of angle A. Now we want to solve for C, so I'm going to divide both sides by 36. The 36 will cancel on the left, and we have the sine of angle C is equal to roughly 0 0.59. Now, I want to get rid of that sign, so I'm going to take the inverse sign of both sides of the equation. When I do that, we get angle C alone, and angle C is equal to roughly 36 degrees. So I can fill that in on our triangle. And now that we know angle C and angle A, we can take the total sum of the interior angles of a triangle, which is 180, and subtract angles A and C, and that'll give us angle B, which turns out to be 113 degrees. So now we know all the angles of the triangle, we can use the law of cosines to solve for the missing side, which in this case is side length B. To do that, I'm going to use this second formula here. So, we have side length B squared is equal to side length A, which is 36 squared, plus side length C, which is 41 squared, minus 2 times side length A, times side length C, times the cosine of angle B. So B squared is equal to 36 squared, which is 1,296, plus 41 squared, which is 1,681, minus 2 times 36 times 41, which is 2,952, times the cosine of angle B. So I'm going to add our 1296 and our 1681 together on the right-hand side of the equation. And we get 2,977 minus 2,952 times the cosine of angle B. So let's plug in what we know for angle B. We know that it has a measurement of 113 degrees. So now we can solve for everything on the right-hand side of the equation. We have b squared is equal to 4,130.4. So we want to solve for b, so we're just going to take the square root of both sides of the equation now. When we do that, the square root and the square are going to cancel on the left, and we have b is equal to roughly 64.3. So now, using the law of sines and the law of cosines, we've solved for all the missing angles and all the missing sides of this triangle. Now lastly in this tutorial, I'd like you to take a look at a word problem. Orienteering is a sport that requires navigational skills using a map and compass. OrienteeringUSA.org is the U.S. national governing body for orienteering challenges. If a team has traveled 4.7 miles along one line, and 5.6 miles along another with an angle of 35 degrees between them, how far would they need to travel to arrive back at their origin? So remember, the first thing you want to do when confronted with this problem is draw yourself a diagram. Don't just try to solve it in your head. So I'm going to draw on this diagram here, and I'm going to label it triangle ABC. Now I know that we travel 4.7 miles along one line and 5.6 miles along another, so I want to pick two side lengths of this triangle, that are roughly equivalent in size because 4.7 and 5.6 are pretty close to each other. I'm going to say that this is our 4.7 mile side here, and this is our 5.6 mile. So, this angle between them, angle A, must be 35 degrees. So the question is asking, how far is this team going to need to travel to arrive back at their origin? Well, if they first traveled 4.7 miles along one line, so this direction, then they traveled 5.6 miles along another, their origin must have been point B. So the question wants to know how far is it going to take them to travel from their current point, point C, to their origin, point B. So we know angle A, and you sometimes might want to write all the information that you know 
present on the side of the problem. So we know that angle A is 35 degrees. We don't know side length A, but we know that that's what we're solving for because that's directly across from angle A. We do know side length B has a value of 5.6 miles, and we know side length C has a value of 4.7 miles. So what we know is that we have angle A, we have side lengths B and C, and we're solving for side length A. So we're going to use this top formula. So side length A squared is equal to side length B squared, which is 5.6 squared, plus side length C squared, which is 4.7 squared, minus 2 times side length B times side length C times the cosine of angle A. And in this case, that's 35 degrees. So A squared is equal to 5.6 squared, which is roughly 31.4, plus 4.7 squared, which is roughly 22.1, minus 2 times 5.6 times 4.7, which is roughly 52.6, times the cosine of 35 degrees. So now you want to do all that work on the right-hand side in your calculator. When you do that, you find that it all comes out to 10.4, approximately. Now, if that's not the answer you got, you want to go back and check your work, and you also want to check that the mode of your calculator is set to degrees, because we're working with degrees in this problem. So now you have a squared is equal to 10.4. We want to solve for a, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. On the left, the square root and the square are going to cancel. And we have a is equal to approximately 3.2. So this orienteering group is going to have to travel roughly 3.2 miles back to their origin. Now you can see how the law of cosines is going to be useful in things like surveying land. It's very useful for engineers when they want to design the plots of a building or a piece of land, and they need to know the distance from one point to the other. They use surveying tools to calculate the angles and the distances, and they use those to build a working model of things.